Hi everybody, I'm Natalie with Missouri Star Quilt Company and I have a fun project for you guys today. I'm calling this quilt Millie's Quilt because I think these little shapes kind of look like an old-fashioned millstone. I thought they were kind of cool. Um, it's super easy and I think you're going to love it. All right, so to make this quilt you're going to need a package of 10-inch print squares and I've used West Palm Beach by Jennifer Paginelli for Free Spirit Fabrics. You're also going to need a package of 10-inch background squares. And for your backing, you're gonna need four and a quarter yards of fabric. And I've used this really beautiful 108. If you're using 108, you only need two and an eighth yards, uh, but 40, four and a quarter for regular 45s. But this backing is really beautiful. So check this out. It's got this really lovely large print, and I just thought it was super fun. The quilt ends up being 67 inches square. And I've machine quilted it with the Just Roses pattern, which I just think is beautiful. It's one of those really elegant floral patterns. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so this quilt is really fun and easy to make. There's a little bit of cutting before we get started. So we'll start with our uh, background cut. We're gonna have some five inch squares and some one inch strips. So you'll take several of them and cut them. There's, there's numbers in the pattern, so don't be afraid. It's just a, it's kind of a two to one because we're using half square triangles and whole, whole five inch square cuts. So it's pretty simple. All right, so I'm gonna cut this one and have them ready to go. We'll set these aside. And then we need some one inch strips. And I did this just by cutting um, cutting my layer cake into a uh, five inch segment and then subcutting them sideways or the opposite direction if you want to be a little more technical. <laughs> and these are just one inch strips. And don't be afraid, the one inch is just smaller, not harder. So I'm just going to cut this and set these aside because we're going to need a few of them. All right, that's plenty. And then what we're going to do is pair up two coordinating or contrasting prints. I like this one. And how about this one. This set is going to make up my half square triangles. So I'm going to pair those together right sides and this one we're going to cut down into five inch squares. Um, on these prints you're going to use this this set for the block and then this set of half square triangles is going to make enough for two of your blocks. So you'll want to keep all your your colors together but you'll get two sets out of the half square triangle set, if that makes sense. So just keep your pairs and colors together. And we are going to draw the X on the back of this and make the eight half square triangles by stitching on both sides of both lines. Oops. Alrighty. Now we're going to cut these apart 
And because we've drawn the lines, we'll leave those for last. It's easier to cut horizontally and vertically first because then if anything gets separated, you can still go back and just cut those half square triangles on the lines. And a rotating mat is helpful, but I don't usually use one for this kind of just do the little angles and move the ruler around. If it feels awkward or uncomfortable, try it a different way. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna set half of these aside for our other, another block. And then these ones we're gonna go ahead and trim. And I am gonna use the Clearly Perfect Slotted Trimmer. And these are gonna be trimmed to four and a half inches. Didn't want to go in there. And this is done by, again, placing the dashed line on your stitch line. And then just trimming along the edges. They should come out nice and square. And if you cut off those little corners, then you won't have that extra fabric in your seam. Makes it a little less bulky. These are Great little squaring tool. And of course, if you wanted to, you could still use a regular square and just square it up by lining up that 45 degree line with your seam. We will press these. Okay, so our next step is going to be taking these little half square triangles and bordering the print side with our little one inch strips, just like so. So we're gonna go ahead and border all of one side, then we'll press them and come back and do the other side. And I just chain piece these because it goes along nice and quick. The first little strip of fabric you'll see is gonna be a little bit longer because we've got a four and a half inch square, but then the second side is gonna line up perfectly because it's five inches and that's the size of this finished block. on these because it's such a small piece of fabric consistency with your seam allowance is pretty important you just kind of want to be a little bit careful and take your time because having these having these one inch squares um, attached to the side is we're trying to achieve a five inch square at the end and uh, you just want to make sure that they're all about the same size that you're consistent and and then everything will match up. All right, we're going to press them, trim them and then add the other strip. I'm just gonna trim off this little bit of extra. And you could trim these down ahead of time if you wanted to, you know, cut one side to four and a half inches if you wanted the extra space on the five inch. That would work just as well. All right, let's add the rest of our strips to this side.
All right, let's press these back. You guys, the hard part is over. So they should pretty much come out five inches. And if you wanted to just check them and square them up a little bit, you absolutely can. Might make stitching the whole thing together a little bit easier for you. There's, there's just a tiny bit of room on this one. So I will go ahead and straighten that. But it's not, it's absolutely not super necessary. If it's within a quarter of an inch, it's all gonna be hidden in the seam, so no big deal. But. I like to check and square and just make sure they're, they're just little bits. My seam allowance can sometimes be a little narrow. So you may or may not have a little bit extra to trim. Either way is no big deal. So if you are gonna square up your blocks though, I would recommend keeping your sashing strips consistently at that um, inch and squaring, taking the extra fabric off the half square triangle side. So I'm just, cause it's, it's important that that sashing stays consistent. Ooh, slid my ruler just a bit. I'm gonna re reposition that. I particularly have issues with that whole keeping your seam straight. It just kind of wiggles on me and always at the very end, it kind of curves to one side. I don't know why, that's just a thing. All right, so we are ready now to assemble our block so what you're gonna do is start with a white square in the middle. We're gonna surround that with these print squares, just like this. And then these squares, I'm pretty sure, yep, I got it right. I had to check because, you know, angles can get challenging. These squares go in just like so, and we will assemble our block. And that's it guys, it's so easy. I'm gonna stitch these up. I'm gonna chain piece these because I like the way that that goes together. So then keeping these attached, we're gonna go ahead and add the other side of our block. So this one will go on here. And I think I'm actually gonna flip it so that I can stitch top to bottom this way. Makes more sense to me that way. I think I tried to do this uh, left-handed. <laughs> Watched mom do it so many times. So I just want to show you this is how they're all connected. This chain piecing method, you can see that the, the threads connect the three rows. So now I'm going to fold this down and stitch this one. Then we'll fold this up and stitch that one. And we're only worried about those nested seams. There's no, um, no triangle or star points. It's just seam intersections and little straight seams.
is it. Let's press it and check out this block. There you have it. It's all, that's all it takes. I think this quilt would be so great for um, somebody who's a new quilter that wants to do something that looks a little bit fancier, but is really very simple. And you'll see back here, I've just put these blocks together right next to each other like this. Oh, that one's almost the same <laughs> in a row of uh, one, two, three, four, five. It's five by five. And you can see that here we've got one, two, three, four, five by five down. One, two, three, four, five. No border because I just think it's a fun picnic quilt. It's a great size for throwing in your car and taking on your adventures. And there are three of these blocks left over. So I just threw together a quick table runner. No border. Again, it's a true bonus. You get it out of your original supply list and you can just throw that on the end of your quilt and quilt it up and bind it and you're good to go. So this quilt was super fun for me to make and I hope you like it too. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today on the Millie Quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. See you next time. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it inspired your creativity. And guys, we're at almost a million quilters strong in our community. So if you know of anybody that you think might like to join us and learn quilting with us, bring them on in, put your arm around them and tell them to subscribe to our channel so that we can all learn and, and grow together.